Hey my friends, so we have learned that in real data projects, if you have a database, there will be a lot of analytical use cases that want to access your data and do analytics. And what's gonna happen, they're gonna write complex queries because in many scenarios they are doing complex analyzers. And if you don't do anything about it in your project, you're gonna face a lot of challenges like complexity and a lot of redundancy of the same complex logic but from multiple users and maybe performance and security issues. And we have learned we have five amazing techniques in order to solve those problems. We have learned the subqueries and CTEs and as well how to create objects like views, CTAs and temporary tables. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and compare them side by side in order to have a big picture about the advantages and the disadvantages of each method. So let's go and compare them. Okay, so now we have our five methods and the first criteria that I would like to compare them is the storage type. We have learned that if you are using subqueries and CTE, what can happen? The database is going to put the result of those two techniques in the memory, in the cache, so that later the main query has a fast access to those intermediate results. But in the other hand, if we are using temporary tables or tables from CTAS, the new created table can be stored inside the disk storage. And now for the views, as we understood, there will be no data stored, and that means we are not using any storage from the database. Now, if you are talking about the lifetime, so that means how long the object gonna live or persist in the database. Now, our three techniques, subqueries, CTE, and temporary tables, all of them gonna live a short time in the database. So all of them are temporary. But now, if you are talking about creating objects using CTAS and views, those two gonna be permanent. So that means they're gonna live in the database as long as you don't drop them. Now we're gonna compare them with something similar is when the database gonna go and drop or delete those objects. Now we have learned that the subqueries and the CTEs have a short time. They are gonna live only during the execution of the query. So once the query ends, the database gonna go to the cache and delete everything. But for the temporary tables, they live a little bit longer as long as you are in the session. But once you end the session, the database is well gonna go and drop and delete your table. Now for the objects that comes from the CTAS and views, as we learned they are persistent and permanent and the database can only delete them if you ask the database to do that by using the ddl command drop. So the database will not delete anything for these two. So now the next one is the query scope, like how we can access those objects. Now for the subquery and the CTE, the scope is here very small. It is accessed only from one single query, the query itself where you write the city and subquery. So you cannot access it from external queries. But we have learned that the temporary tables, CTAS and views, you can access all those objects from multiple queries. So that means you can access those objects from multiple external queries. Now the next one, if you are thinking about the reusability, if you look to the subqueries, they are very limited. The subquery gonna be used only in one query and only in one place. So if you need it in multiple places, you have to go and repeat the same logic. So subqueries are the worst with their usability. But now if you are talking about the CTE, it is a little bit better. You still can access it only from one single query, but you can access it in the same query from multiple places. So you can access it multiple times from different joins and you don't have to repeat the same logics over and over. But still it is limited because you have only one query that is using the logic. Now if you think about the temporary tables, I could say the reusability here is medium and that's because because you can access the data by multiple queries, but only during this session. So once the session is ended, you cannot access it anymore, which means you have to recreate it in order to reuse it again. So it is more reusable than the CTE and the subqueries, but not that good like the CTAs and views. Those techniques can offer the highest reusability for you. So they are always there for multiple users from multiple queries. So it's gonna eliminate a lot of redundancies and you have to do the job only once. Now moving into the next one, if you are thinking about the intermediate result of those techniques, the question is how fresh is the data? 
Is the data from these objects always up to date? Now for the subqueries and the CTEs, they are always up to date because the SQL is executing the logic on the fly and storing the data in the memory and immediately after that gonna come the main query and get the data. So always the intermediate results in the memory are up to date. But now if you think about the temporary tables and the CTAS, the query is only executed once and if there is like any update and changes on the original table, you will not find those changes in those objects and that's because SQL executed once and that's all. So if you query those tables there is no guarantee that the data are up to date. So if you want fresh data you have always to drop the table and create it again from the query. Now if you are talking about the views they are amazing they are always up to date because views does not store any data so each time you ask the views for data what gonna happen the database gonna go to the original table and fetch the data to the view so your data are always fresh and up to date. So this is a big picture about the behavior of those advanced techniques that you can use in SQL projects and if you ask my opinion my favorite is gonna be the views in the first place then in the second in my list is the CTE. They are amazing but don't use more than 5 CTEs in one query, otherwise it's gonna be really annoying and hard to read. And then I'm gonna say in the third place the subqueries and then the CTIS, I use CTIS if the views are slow. If that's a scenario, I'm jump to the CTIS and create a permanent physical tables from my query. And the last one that I really use is the temporary tables. So this is how I rank those techniques in my skill projects. Now I would like to show you as well a big picture on how things works in my projects in order to see all those different techniques and possibilities that you can use. It's like a big picture and recap. So story time. So you have a database and things starts where you have a database administrator or let's say a data engineer that is creating a new table from the scratch. So he gonna write a DDL statement in order to create one physical table at our database. And now our database table is empty. That's why in the second step he gonna go and write an insert statement in order to fill our new table with data. Now once we have a table, we're gonna give the access maybe to a data scientist or data analyst in order to start writing SQL queries. So now the first thing that could happen is that the logic is complex and she has to do that in two steps. So the first step is a query that prepares the data in order to execute the second step. So that's why she's gonna go and use the subquery and the main query gonna go and retrieve the data from the intermediate results in order to prepare the final results for the analyst. Now what could happen is that there will be an SQL logic in the query where it keep repeating the scripts. So now instead of writing another subquery for that, she gonna go and put this logic in CTE and now she gonna go to the main query and use the result of the CTE in multiple places in the same query. So all those stuff, the subqueries and the CTE queries, the main queries, all those stuff happens in one single query. And now what could happen is that she is writing an amazing code. So instead of using it only in her query, what can happen, she gonna go and persist this logic in the database. So she gonna put it as a view in the database so that all other users and analysts can benefit from this logic and they don't have to write it again. So instead they're gonna go and query the view and this kind of makes their life easier. And of course our data analyst can as well use this view in the main query. And now one more thing, she has as well another logic that is really complex and as well everyone can benefit from it. But the issue, this query is very slow. So now she has to decide, do I put it in view or do I create a new table based on the query using CTAS? Now of course because of the performance and the view takes around 30 minutes to be executed, she decided to execute the query using the CTAS where she generate a physical table. So so that all other analysts as well can access this new table in order to reuse the results. And of course she can use it in her main query. And with that now we have experience how things works in real projects. It is not simple select query from table. It is like this. People are creating subqueries, CTEs, views, temporary tables, CTAS for different purposes. Alright my friends, so with that we have covered everything about those 5 techniques. In the next section we're gonna talk about AI and SQL and how to use ChatGPT in order to assist you in your SQL projects where I'm gonna show you the best prompts that I use at my work. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm gonna really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, 
all those stuff gonna help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.